Okay, okay. I'm hoping that everything is working. Maybe I need to show my hand or something so you can see that something is actually happening and the screen is not frozen. So it's Rikko Kovasin here from Finland and I'm playing with mica powders today. We are starting in about two, three minutes. So hi everybody. If you can just let me know that you can see and hear perfectly. I'm not totally sure why the camera through Facebook is always blurry. Because when I test my camera, like through its own ad, ad, not ad, app, it works perfectly, but whenever I'm attaching it to Facebook, then it's all blurry. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sure what's the problem. Hi, Liliana. Hi, Johanna. I says, hey. <laughs> Hi, Atu. So let's give it a, one more minute and then I'll start. Today my topic is mica powders. So as you can see, these are brand new and I haven't even opened the sets yet. So I'm showing some techniques. There's quite a few. One, two, three, four, five, six techniques at least, seven maybe even. So what you can do with mica powders and then we're also doing um, our journal page, at least I hope that we have. Moikka Mari! So much time. Hey Sato! Oh, there's so many Finnish people here. Hi Rini! These are the new colors, yes. Or two of the three sets that are new. This one is called Paradise and this one is called Serenity. Sorry my bad English, I'm hoping I'm saying it correctly. So let's see. Hello Wendy. Sharon should be, yes, now she's here. She's joining in, so if you have any questions, just ask away and Sharon will be here to help. And after the show, I'll also answer questions if there's anything, because I'm so bad, I'm sorry, so bad at answering at the same time when I start doing, because then I get captivated by the mediums and whatever I'm demonstrating. Hi, Janet. Hi, Mary. So happy that you are here, but well, after the show, I'll go through all the comments and answer if there's anything. So it's already one minute past, so let's start doing so. As I was saying before, the topic today is mica powders. These are two of the three of the three new sets. This one is called Paradise, and this one is called Serenity. Serenity. I'm sorry. English is not my mother tongue. So I have two sets of the three new ones and I'm thinking of playing with these. Naturally there's the old mica powder sets also that work perfectly for every te technique that I'm showing and well let's get started about what is mica. Probably you are maybe familiar with it because Prima has all the mica powders that are really, really, as you can see, hopefully, shiny, even iridescent powders, really fine. But there's also mica flakes, and they are of the same material. It's a mineral that's really kind of soft and flaky, but also has this really great shine. And mica has a number of uses. For example, if you use cosmetic that has shine, it's probably mica in it as well. And it's in detergents and, well, widely used. 
So, this one is an older project. One of the first ones I did when I was playing with Micah, and it already has three different ways of incorporating in Micah into a project. I'm going to show them to you, but this layer here, then the green layer, let me get a bit closer, maybe you can see better. And then also these here. Well, four if you count the Michael Flakes as well. But let me get rid of that. And rid of this one also. And I know these are a bit boring compared to a, a journal. But here's some examples what you can do with Micah. Let's start with the easiest one. So I'm using these kind of ATC as my base. So Prima Mica, Finnabar Mica, they only have the mica in them. They don't have uh, pigment and they don't have binder. So you need something sticky for the powder to kind of stick onto, grab. So for that you can use whatever. Um, only your imagination is the limit. So the easiest way is to use double-sided tape. Different ways. That's just strips. These are star-shaped and then there's little, little dots. And if I remove the protective sheet from these, then we can get going. Let's use the pretty silver one. The little jars have these kind of sprinkler systems, sprinkling holes, <laughs> which are then make it easier for you to apply. And why would I use just one color? Let's add the gold as well. So I'm just tapping the powder on top and then I'm taking a soft, clean brush with, like, it's not wet, it's dry, yeah, so, sorry, my English is really bad today. So, and with the soft brush, I'm just brushing so I get the powder everywhere on top of the adhesive, then getting rid of the extra. And then I start, as you can see, I'm using more force now, kind of cleaning the rest of the cardstock. Some of it gets stuck. As you can see, this one is a bit bluish color, and this now has these metal colors, but mainly the powder sticks to the double-sided tape. That's the easy one, like even no, no mediums one. Another one, again, something sticky. So let's do another card. These techniques are just for kind of getting you inspired to try something new because I'm pretty sure that many of you have tried mica mists, but maybe these are something that you haven't thought about of using. So what I'm doing now, I'm inking my stamp with embossing ink, because the embossing ink is sticky. It's stickier than normal, how do you say? Just plain, plain, come on, plain um, ink. These all have the protective sheet, I realized. Maybe I can get some through anyway. Let's use a couple of colors again. The 
kind of procedure is the same as with the double sided tape. Some on top, and then I'm using a clean, soft brush to brush the mica on top. And as the embossing ink is sticky, again, the mica is sticking to the ink and not anywhere else. And this one I prepared earlier, so it does come off eventually. So if you want a card, for example, that is handled, because now that it's still sticky, it doesn't come off, but after the ink is dried, it starts to lose. So if you want it to be permanent, it's not in a frame, it's a card that is handled, then you need to add fixative on, on top. So that's another technique. Then the one that I'm pretty sure that you already know, doing your own mica mist. But as I said, there's no fixative, no binding medium in the Finnabar mica. So this does come off. This one is again something I prepared earlier. So I can just use my finger and it comes off. So if you want again something that is permanent, use fixative on top. What I normally use is hairspray, but naturally that's not a good fixative. It's not artistic kind of quality, so it might get yellow through time. So doing the mica mist is really easy. I have a mister with some water in it. And to make it a mica mist, then you need to add the mica. Okay, I'm doing this off frame. Well, let's try. Probably it's like Murphy's Law and it goes everywhere. But let's see. Yeah, it starts to go everywhere. A little bit more. And the more you use, the more mica naturally it has. So just, and if you let it sit for a while, the mica, as it's a mineral, it's heavier than water. It starts piling to the bottom, and then you just need to shake it. And it comes off as a bit milky because the mica flakes are kind of emerged in the water. But when it dries, you can see the shine of the mica. Do you want, maybe I'll dry that for you. Sorry about the noise. The, that one is really effective and well something happened to my silent one it doesn't work anymore but as you can see there's no binder so you need to have fit fixative on top then my favorite way of using mica by far is doing your own paint and for the base i always use soft gloss gel. You could use matte, but as the mica is shiny. So if you had like something like matte on top, it dulls the shine a bit. Naturally, whatever you are looking for. If you want to add something to the mica mist, by the way, 
You can also add, for example, gum arabic. I haven't tried that one, but people have told me that it works wonders. You need to just boil it, I think, dilute it, and then it's good to go. And that way, the mica or the mist itself has the binder. So I put some of the gel, soft soft gel, on to a piece of plastic. It can be anything. Then some mica and mixing it in. As the gel is white before it dries, the look now is a bit, well, paler, a bit milkier than what it is when it's completely dried. But you can use it as a paint to kind of paint surfaces, or like I did with this altered piece. This part was, as you can see, metal color, like sh uh, silvery, but I added a touch of gold in there using the mica paint so just like this or then as the golden dots on top of here are it's just diluted mica paint with a little of a bit of water and then you can splash it and after it dries you can really see the shine in the mica. Now the whiteness of the gel hinders it a bit, but as you know, it dries clear. So afterwards you get these really, really shiny effects. And well, last but not least, with the little cards, then we can get on to the actual project. Is to create a 3D version. If you are familiar with the Prima gels, you probably know that the base for that one is 3D. So same procedure as with the paint, as the soft gloss gel is, as it says, soft body. So that is more like a paint. And by adding mica to the 3D gel, it's more like a texture paste. So just gel, then mica, come on. and mix it together. The same thing as with the soft gel. The whiteness of the gel now hinders the shine a bit, but as it dries clear, this one is really shiny. So let's do another card, sorry about the view of, of my hand. Hmm, too much stuff on the place, so and then just applying it through the stencil. Here we go. After drying, it's again three dimensional, really shiny. I think this is fun. I really like to kind of explore with mediums, mixing and matching, whatever works. Just really quickly clean my brush a bit. 
around the stems all. Here we go. Let's get those away as well. So now onwards to the actual project. Now that we have some of the techniques. Uh, so adding the soft gel would be like an adding a fixative on top. Yes, the soft gel you can also use on top as a fixative or kind of, um, what's the word, lacquer. But naturally, if you use a brush on top, it moves the mica. Let me show you, actually. But if you emerge the mica into a gel, then you don't need anything on top because it stays nicely. Let's do that one as it's dried. And then where's the gel? And a brush. So let me see. I have a soft brush and I'm trying to be using like strokes going on one direction and kind of a light hand and I'm able to get this fixed pretty good. As you can see, the stamped image didn't move that much. There's a bit of bleeding. So if you're wanting a really, really delicate picture transferred, I would recommend like many layers of um, fixative on top, as that doesn't affect the stamped image. But if you have a light hand, and it's more like a background effect anyway, so then going over with either gloss or matte soft gel is also a solution or anything see-through. So let me try to get some room for myself to actually add my journal. Here we go. I don't need the lids right now, so let's move them there. So, something like this. There's the stamped layer underneath. Not sure if you can pick it up through the video. Then there's three-dimensional layer. There's painted layer. This one is also done with mica, as well as this button and then the splashes so it's kind of combining not all but most of some of the techniques already used into a journal page so let's get a new page and start with the stamping this time i already prepared him for the page because I normally use the photos of women from the Art Daily vintage photo book but this time I thought that hmm, let's do him so maybe he would be around here so the background would be somewhere around there so let's start with the stamping and well there was at least in the beginning a few people from finland so let me get a few words in my native tongue eli siis alussa nyt olen ollut niin vauhdissa että jos on sana suusta oikein suomen kielellä mutta siis kiitos kaikille jotka on tullut katsomaan tosi 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 kiva nähdä suomalaisia Mika Jauheet on ollut siis aiheena tällä kertaa. Erilaisia tekniikoita vähän niillä käyty. Ja jos tosiaan on kysymyksiä, niin siis suomeksikin voi totta kai kysyä. 
on tosi huono lukemaan tuota chattia tälleen niin kuin kesken kaiken, mutta tota, aina sitten shown jälkeen käyn kaikki läpi. Niin jos on kysymyksiä, niin kirjoittelkaa sinne vaan, niin vastailen sitten tämän jälkeen. As I was saying in Finnish, if you have any questions, just write them there and Sharon will help. And I'll also go through everything after the show, so if there's anything she didn't know or or something, then I'll answer you afterwards. So I stamped with an embossing ink, and now I'm sprinkling the different powders on top. I'm working with the Serenity set. I'm hoping I'm saying it correctly. As the tones, well, I love these vibrant tones also from the Paradise set. But as I was adding the vintage photo on top, then I think that the Serenity with kind of a vintage theme in the colors works perfectly. So I used this kind of um, jeans colors and also a bit of the golden or maybe to me this feels like earthy golden it's not bright bright but perfect vintage and as you can see i used a couple of powders on top it's not like it's the, just one the fun thing with the sets is that you get many colors and these go a long way uh yeah the powder kit is serenity like sharon said i actually use it for the first time but as you can see i'm already loving it especially these three just look these are perfect together there's also these paler tones which i'm thinking i'm going to try to do the three-dimensional thing with so let me grab a piece of some kind of plastic here we go in the previous one i used actually an opal magic mica powder as opal magic works in the mica as same as with everything else that on top of white it's looking just opal pearly and on top of black it starts to show its original or the true color like the hot really vibrant color but let's see if these pale tones work That's maybe a bit too little. Let's add the other one as well. I'm curious to see how it feels because this one looks a bit more grayish tone. Come on. Maybe something would come. It has the seal on top and I can't get the lid open. Okay, now, now it comes. Perfect. I should have prepared the stuff state beforehand but i kind of wanted you to see me opening the package perfect this kind of a vintagey pinkish tone together with the kind of straw color really lovely Almost like oyster, oh, what, what's it called? Oyster shell? O o oyster, now I'm sounding like Sean Connery. I'm applying that one. I'm going to do a blog post about this project probably next week. I'll get it to my blog and the previous one I blogged yesterday 
So if you want to check some, for example, mica powder color or something, the post always has the links and the names. So here we go. There's the three-dimensional part. And then let's do the paint. What color would that be? Maybe the gray one. This one. The kind of iron. Hmm. I should have cut more of it. Plastic pieces. Not just two to show, but four at least. So, again, the soft gloss gel as the base for the paint. I'll mix a bit of the blue one in as well, as it's there. It would be better if I had the first layer to actually dry before adding this one. But the papers are coming on top anyway, so. And I don't like to use the heat tool with the gels because I boil them so easily. I'm a bit impatient, so maybe I use too much heat or I'm too close. And for example, the three-dimensional pattern, for this one I'm looking for a lacy kind of effect. So if it's really puffy, which happens when the gel starts to boil, I don't like it. Not with this project. And then this one would be coming on top. Yes. We chose the papers from the Moon Child as I used kind of purples and pinks in the other project. But it also has the perfect vintage tones. So I'm able to use those in this, this layout or journal page. Then also adding, sorry about my hands again. Kind of bringing the same color as in the background to the layers as well. So, that's a line so I can use my scissors. Maybe that one as well. And I'll be able to get something out of this one too. No, I don't like the green. Doesn't have anything green, so not green this time. Maybe this is a bit too big. Yeah. Huh, better. So we don't end up hiding all the background. I kind of like that darker tone there. There. There we go. And that one there. Hmm. Better staple these together as 
everything starts to move so much. So if you have watched my videos before or been in a Facebook live before, this is my go-to tool when it comes to layering a stapler. Yes, that one looks good. And then, yes, the other one had some flowers kind of in the side. I thought that the man would be good with the planet styled detail. Let's use the stapler to adhere that one as well. And then I actually need to dry this a bit, sorry for the noise. Just enough so that when I used it like foam squares the cluster will stay at least during the show i can naturally glue it to tomorrow again but so that it will be there let's put it there And then the mister on top. The Art Daily sticker is adhered on top of a piece of an old book, like a book page. But I trimmed it so much that come on, you can't really read anything about it. Because the problem or the beauty of using old book page in craft is that they actually contain words. So, for example, I was making my wedding invitations way back over 10 years ago and used old book pages in them. And then when I started to post them, I realized that one of them had something like death or funeral <laughs> written on top of the because i just thought it looked beautiful but nowadays i try to use language i don't know so if you read for example russia you may, may find my projects really funny sometimes but i find it handier that at least i don't get distracted by some word so we have the stamp layer the dimensional layer and the paint one and then, well, now we need to add that one. I completely forgot about the branch. But luckily, I can get it still there. So the branch is just regular white cardstock. But before I used the die to cut it, I put an adhesive sheet on top. On top. So it's now double-sided tape, kind of on top so let's do that golden one so the surface is sticky so it's the same technique as with the double-sided tape just something to get the powder to stick onto And then using a soft brush. To apply the powder on top. You can use the same technique also as a background effect. So if you have a die. Or you can use freehand cutting. And then just 
adhere this one to the background or die cut a piece of double sided adhesive and attach that to the background and then swipe the powder on top. Maybe it should be going. Let me see if I can wiggle it in. Or do I need yes? Here we go. And then maybe that's drop of glue. So the branch will stay put. And then we need to make the sphere still this side or this side. Maybe he's almost like a Mickey Mouse if there's a sphere here and here. But maybe even more Mickey Mouse. Now let's use that size. So the sphere one I did just like this. Some glue. You could use the gloss gel as well, but regular glue will do. And then applying it all the way through. And the glue, if you're using regular glue and not the soft gel, it needs to be something that is going to dry as transparent because when you add the mica on top, if the powder doesn't turn, oh, sorry, the adhesive turn into transparent, then you're going to lose the color you're then applying. A bit more and then the golden color maybe. And then you could go in a bit. Then some glue to actually adhere it. And when I apply it to my project, I then turn it around. So the powders move a bit. So after drying, let me try to find the right page. It's almost like Marvel or like a galaxy because the, all the different colors merge in a bit. So here we go. Then just some words from the Art Daily Sentiments. And after everything is dried, the paint one also, then I could use a um, permanent pen to scribble something. Now I said still wet. I don't dare because then the actual pen gets ruined. But what would be a good title for this page? Now it would be a good color. Maybe the green one. Greenish. No. Go with that one. Hmm. Be passionately curious. Maybe that would go with the world. Be your own hero. Dare to be powerful. Maybe be your own hero. I really like to use the words as they spark kind of a story connected to the photo. And then you could actually journal about the whole story. But like so. And after drying, then the finishing details with a permanent pen. And then you'll have something like this. So. That's all for now. I'll 
quickly browse through the comments if there's something I need to show or tell and then let me see in Porsche tips let me see now, at least I couldn't are there any prima just suited for for use on fabrics uh, depending if you want to uh, wash them as I mean you can use any of the gels they are great adhesives and work for fabric as well but if you want to wash the fabric afterwards if it's a canvas project or something that doesn't <laughs> need the washing then it's perfect uh, my kind of paint rags are looking like this and they usually have gel on them so sometimes it survives there's a teeny tiny bit survived but more more or less they get washed away in the washing machine so that's uh, not a permanent solution if you want to add something fabric glues work better if you want something to be used and to be able to wash it and clean it but if you're doing an alternate project something that doesn't need washing then the gels work perfectly especially the 3d one because it's uh how do you say um thicker than the soft body one because if you apply especially in a thin fabric the soft body gel probably is kind of comes through the fabric a bit but the 3d one is really thick especially the oh, what's it called sorry now i'm lost for words the thickest one because it's more like vaseline it's really really thick so that would be the safest option if you don't want anything to come through the fabric but again not washable like not in everyday use but yeah so if you have any questions i'll answer them in a couple of minutes in writing but uh thank you so much for joining me today and i hope you feel inspired by the techniques and the page and try the new sets well i showed the other other set but well lately i've been really drawn into tea colors and vintage colors so this set was just screaming my name so this was serenity which i played using or used in this page and this set is paradise and i think the third set which i don't have is called oriental those are the new my cassettes so Thank you so much for coming. A few words in Finnish to kind of wish everybody a farewell. But I'll see you again in next month. Eli vielä suomeksi kiitokset kaikille, jotka tulitte. Tosiaan saa laittaa kommenttia suomeksi, ruotsiksi tai englanniksi. Kaikille onnistuu ja Google Translate hoitaa loput. Mutta kiitoksia kun tulitte. Ja tosiaan blogissa löytyy lisätietoa. Nyt jo tästä sivusta, jos joku materiaali mietityttää. Mulle saa aina laittaa mailia. Tämän mä yritän saada blogiin ensi viikolla. Ja sitten tota, toivottavasti kraftaamassa nähdään. Eli kiitoksia. Bye, thank you. Bye bye.